Hello, what is up everybody? My name is Mario Pichardo. Welcome to the Mario Pichardo podcast. Um, so here we go by methods uh, is what I call the show. Uh, and bear with me here because I'm just setting something up. So I'm kind of looking at the uh, the good old monitor here. Um, so as you may have noticed, this episode has video. We finally got that set up. Um, so I hope that it looks a little bit better. Um, originally when I was like, all right, let's set it up so it's a little different. Um, I was hoping that, see, because my, my issue was the lighting, I thought, and that I wasn't getting good clarity because of the lighting. Now I think it's the lens, not that it's a bad lens at all, because it's really not. It's a great lens, I think. Um, I'm not getting the level of sharpness that I thought um that i would get so i mean i don't really know why really i mean maybe somebody could explain it to me i i thought that it was like that the lens was there was an issue with the lens um i don't really think that anymore though i don't think it was an issue with the lens i don't think it has really anything to do with that kind of thing i think it's more of like i don't know i think it's just Maybe, maybe it's like, like, I, like I thought that the lens was defective, but it, I don't think it's defective. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But something is like, obviously going on. Uh, but anyway, so, I mean, for you guys, the image quality probably looks like totally fine. Like it's not an issue. No problems. Looks great to me. I wanted like that sharpness. Cause you'll, sometimes you'll like watch someone on, um, what is it? Uh, on YouTube or you watch someone online and they'll have this like video where it's like, wow, it's like the clarity here. Like you can tell, like it looks really nice. looks really professional. So, I mean, I'm going to keep trying. Um, I don't, I wouldn't want to have to like, um, get a new setup just to, um, you know, like I have to buy another lens, oh, man, if I knew, that this would have been an issue earlier on i would have bought a prime lens probably so because i'm assuming that at this point that the reason i'm not getting that like really sharpness is because the lens i'm using is a zoom lens it's a really well rated zoom lens but i guess it's just not i guess the only way for me to know i should go to a shop and rent uh and just like rent a prime like a like a prime for me anyway um so welcome to the show uh the show has a lot of um for those of you who are listening over the podcast this is the first video segment of it so i'm not gonna make a big show of it but um mm, yeah that, that was just the, the issue that i had with it um so before i know i said originally i said the podcast wasn't going to be political but i think that as the podcast is kind of as we're getting more and more episodes out there, more things out there, I'm kind of going back and I'm kind of saying, mm, you know, maybe this is something that I do want to do. You know, maybe I do want to have it be more uh, serious. I mean, maybe that is, maybe that, that that's just the direction it goes in. And so that's not necessarily bad at all, I don't think. Um, but it's definitely something that, you know, I'm uh noticing and mostly that and you know and it's mostly because like when you look at the when you look at the arguments um that are happening in the public sector right now where people are um like like this protesting i was i was reading something today where uh there were protesters outside of chick-fil-a the first chick-fil-a that opened up in uh in canada and these people would dress so weird like men dress like drag queens it was so weird and they were and they were um they were protesting outside of the chick-fil-a it's like you just look at these people and you're like all right <laughs> you know this is this is a scene you know and I, look i'm not i'm not going to judge anybody by their looks you know but they look like clowns i mean look i'm not a, i'm not a, a, a i'm not here to be a nice the nicest person man they look like clowns and I mean, that's what they were doing. They, they come. And the funny thing is that in retaliation, you have all of these people come in from then uh, as counter protesters come out from churches 
And so <laughs> it's funny because Chick-fil-A is a chicken sandwich restaurant, you know, and it's and it becomes this huge kind of cultural fight over chicken sandwiches. But the fight is that, see, and this is the thing, and, and Tim Pool said this, and he was really, I think, really spot on when he said it, that, um, you know, this is, if the left really thinks that this is such a huge issue, um, clearly they think it's the people buying chicken sandwiches is more important than anything else that they list, you know, because they always harp on about, oh, climate change is a real issue and it's a real problem. Um, and they'll go on and on with all these other things too. But to see that and to see like um, people really not taking to uh, this chicken thing is just weird. And you know what? Uh, most people, like I'm sure a lot of you guys listening to this, aren't really inclined towards politics. Like you just don't care. Like as long as it doesn't affect your day to day, you know, you still have your job, you're still making your money. I mean, you got to pay taxes, which is annoying, but as long as it doesn't really impact your day to day, I mean, you're fine. You don't care. You're like, eh, you know, it is what it is. Like, you know, and that's most people, unfortunately, uh, you know, they're kind of, uh, they're kind of there in that space. And so, so Tim made a really good point, which was that, you know, when you have people in that space where they're kind of, uh, all right, this is my life, you know, I, as long as I'm good, it's, everything's good. Um, then you come in protesting something that they like, they're going to get mad at you. And so the left is coming out and, 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 and trying to do this thing because they have this whole like cancel culture thing. But for them to come out and do this thing against Chick-fil-A, people are going to look at that and say, no, you know, you know, screw you, man. I like Chick-fil-A. I like my chicken sandwiches. I like this stuff. And I don't think that they realize um, that if you go to people, right, and you attack them, they're going to immediately get defensive. You know, you can't go to people like like one of the things that they were doing, they would go to these events and they were they would like point at someone and they'd be like, shame, shame, shame as people were coming out of the restaurant having ordered, you know, their chicken sandwiches. Look, most people don't care, man. And most people don't care if you're gay, straight, lesbian, whatever. They don't care. I'm sorry. Like being gay today is not a big deal compared to how it was a long time ago. You know, it's easier. And I say that because it's easier to come out today as a, as a as, as a gay person than it is to come out as a Trump supporter you know let that sink in because that used to be people being able to come out as gay used to be a really big deal you know they used to be hard and it was hard because there's a lot of social stigmas against that um, and but but now there aren't you know it's really not if you if you live in America if you live especially if you live in a democratic state, Look, no one cares, man. I'm sorry. And even even the Christians who do care, um, they, they we just don't care as much as you think, man. It's not. I mean, we care, but we don't care in in the way of um, how dare you know? How dare you do this? Get your you know, like no one's gonna no one's gonna like run you down with pitchforks, man. That's not that's not. And maybe that was at one point in time, but that's not the current world. And so to see. Uh, so many people kind of come out and say, oh, you know, you, you got to close the cancel. All right. You, you, I think you, you know where I'm going with this. I'm not going to belabor the point too much. Um, it's kind of it's just a little, you know, crazy to see that kind of thing happening. Um, you know, you can't really control people or what they do. But is this really I just, I just like you sit there and you and you hear that and you're like, is this really the the, the what's it called? The hill you want to die on? Like you want to die in the chicken sandwich <laughs> and i was thinking it was funny because the counter protesters were probably you know what they probably ate for lunch chick-fil-a and it's just funny man because the stray sand effect is that whenever you go out there and you try to um bring attention to an issue whatever the issue is um but you try to do it in like a censorious way or you try to you know make a big commotion about it more people end up hearing about it and what do you think people are going to hear when they hear about Chick-fil-A? You know, they're going to want to go there. Most people look at this point, the media has almost no credibility, man. I think most people don't trust the media. At least one in three is, at least one in three doesn't, um, you know, so that's not most, but obviously, but you no, know, a lot, that's a lot, man. That's a lot. One in three people to know that the media, 
um, who the media really is and what they really do. Uh, that's that, you really have to you really have to mess up big time, dude, for something like that to happen. And you know, rightly so. So I think people. Well, I think ultimately, what's going to happen is people are going to look at this event. They're going to look at other events. They're going to look at how just how radical things are getting and kind of say, you know what? I'm not voting for whoever the Democratic candidate is. This is like this is uh, this is like clown world. Clown world, like like just straight up clown world, and I don't want a part of it. Um, and you can't blame those people. I can't blame them. I gotta say. You know, you're right. You're kind of right. You're a little right there. You know, th this is not, you know, it's not your mom's ro rodeo. This is like, you know, this is real life. And you're, geez. So I just wanted to talk about that because um, I think that was a real thing. The other thing that I brought up, that we talked about before, was um, men. And I think there's a real, 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 I'm going to talk about this all the time. Um, I think there's a real need for men to have some real support in society. And I think that, like, because when you look, right, look at how many men uh, find themselves disproportionately, like, um, at odds with society, where a man tries to come out. Somebody posted this on Twitter. I was like, yeah, I agree. Um, you know, that if you come out and you say, hey, you know, men are, aren't are really getting a chance to speak their mind, for example, or they're not really getting a chance to get jobs, certain jobs. Um, somebody immediately come by and say, and say, what? No, women are even more oppressed or whatever. And that as soon as that's said, it kind of like completely derails the male thing. And that's what it becomes about, is that the female, oh yeah, but the women, but we gotta go and check out the women. Well, no one's saying that there aren't other issues. They're saying that the issue is that we're ignoring the men. And we are, man, I mean, we are, and I feel bad and I feel sorry. But it's not just that, and we talked about this before, um, it's not just that the men aren't being covered, that the men don't show up in the, sh in the, um, in the conversation or, or um, it, 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 you know, it's not just that we're putting the men down all the time, but, um, it's, it, it, it it's the men are growing up in a world that just doesn't want them. It's a world where women are fully grown and independent, do whatever they want. I don't need no man kind of thing. And when you have that, um, the man kind of turns around and looks and feels disposable. And and some people might be like, all right, well, it is what it is, man. I mean, men can do whatever, but you know, that's half the family. And so we also shouldn't turn around and say, now I'm going to go into another tangent and say uh, that we should have a, you know, that, that a woman can, can run a family as well as, an, as, a, as a woman and man can, you know, because I don't think that that's true. Like, I think a woman can raise a child okay, but... When you look at the statistics, look, I, people do this all the time. Like there's always exceptions to the rule, right? So look, if there's a hundred women and out of a hundred women, 90% of them fail, like raising their kid, their kid ends up in jail. Their kid ends up doing something like really bad overdoses on or whatever. Um, and 10 of the, 10 of the hundred, um, like, you know, 90% of them that, that happens to and then 10% of them are like totally fine and great and you were one of the 10% this is just like a hypothetical right um that doesn't mean it can't happen but statistically you know because because we want to talk facts that's not what happens most of the time you know and that's that's a the truth you know that's like the, the real the real deal 
this is that in most places when the father isn't there the children do poorly i mean they really do poorly man crime crime um i think correlates almost like perfectly with um and don't quote me on that but with um female you know with that relationship with uh i keep losing like like for many seconds i keep like missing what i was trying to say but yeah and so so you know when you have a kid uh most of the time if he's raised by a single person um male or female but you know obviously it's typically female um they don't do so hot so i think it's really damaging for our society i think you know you know what's happening and, and i'll just i'll say it outright man and youtube has probably already heard things on here that they're like let's demonetize us let's take this out let's destroy this channel because he's saying things we don't agree with it's hate speech or whatever youtube's i'm not even gonna go there you already know all right you already know um but the thing is is you know we have to stop treating men a certain way but also allow men to have a place in society one of the really big issues and you know everybody it's not but it's not everybody you know it's the media and you we have to we have to call them out for who they are it's the media all right it's the news stations um it's the hollywood uh movies that are coming out the tv shows all around the same ideology that, that that's that's perpetuated by the media by the news organizations by all these groups um this idea that uh the men are disposable that men aren't you know important that 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 there's not really a place for men you know that that we don't need them that that a woman could be totally fine without a man that they could raise a family totally fine they, they can't you know you can't though but you can't you need you need a man and so for the men out there you know one of the other things that's happening is that if you're a man um women are starting to graduate with um better degrees than men they're getting higher paying jobs than men are and because women are hypergamous um which for those of you who don't know a woman does not want to be with a man who generally speaking makes look there's always exceptions to the rules so please you know um doesn't want to date a man who makes less than her and so what we're starting to see is a society in which the woman is uh making more and then she's looking for the prospects and the men that do make more than her you know could provide more resources um are few and far between and so that kind of leaves a huge swath of the population where they're well yeah i mean you can you can have a man but look he's not going to provide you what you wanted um, and this is kind of where that disconnect happens because what's happened in society. Ah, I remember what I was going to say now. Um, what happened in society is that we became a very feminine. Look, I'm not going to be, I can't, I can't, I have to be able to speak. You know, I can't feel this is what they do. Um, it, it feels like whenever you want to say something, you can't say it because it's hate speech, because it's bad, because of this people need to be able to speak. Man. And I think we should never turn away from telling the truth and when they try to come in and censor is really when the truth matters the most so i'm just going to say what i mean i don't care if it's offensive it is what it is and i'm just trying to speak truth so with that disclaimer out of the way um our society i think has become very like very feminine and it's become very you know we're we're so focused on people's feelings um and not so much on on the things that that on the bedrock of a society which is um you know what are what are the rights of the person what makes a strong stable family um what keeps societies together what have we done that we know works for sure you know the reason why uh lgbt for example was demonized for so long was it, 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 there's not like it's not that there was like a hatred for um, LGBT people out of nowhere and what's interesting is, is that China recently came out and admitted not recently it's been a couple years now but the reason why they don't approve of LGBT in their country and the reason that they gave was that they see it as a way to destabilize the society um, that was their actual reason 
And you know what? They're right. And I'll tell you why I think that they're right. Um, you know, uh, look, I have friends who are, who are gay, so I'm not saying that, like, in fact, all of my, my, some of my really closest friends are, um, but, you know, one of the things with, um, the, the reason that I don't think that, you know, we should be pushing homosexuality is because when you push it, you slowly start to develop a society where, where more and more people are kind of like, oh, well, you know, then this is okay, then this is cool, then what about this? You know, it becomes a slippery slope where, and the, and the original reason why homosexuality wasn't a thing, right? And it's described in the Bible. It's not a part of God's original creation. And when you step away from God's original creation, what happens? You know, you start to get... Um, uh, disorder, chaos, morality slips through the door. There's a reason why morality was there. Because um, a lot of what these what these groups are trying to do now is say, oh, well, you know, if a man can uh, be with another man, then why can't a grown man be with a little girl? You know, why isn't that okay? And well, to be honest, if you throw God out the door, there's no reason why you can't blatantly commit murder. Because people, what a lot of people don't understand is that society's values, society's, um, you know, what society holds dear is based on Christian Judeo values, things that value a strong family, things that value, um, you know, hard and honest work, things that value telling the truth, things that value all these things. If you take away God from a society, from, from like an American, uh, American society, you're going to start to devolve. You know, and things like transgenderism is totally fine. It's totally okay. It's totally, yeah, you know, you do whatever you want. Live your life, you know? And, you know, while well, people have that right, for sure, if, if we allow an assault on our culture, um, on our values and things like that, our values are going to change really quickly. And I think people really underscore the impact of that when you change the ideas of what you think are important in a society and family isn't one of them, friendship isn't one of them, and you replace that with money, with individualism, you get a society that doesn't speak to one another. You get a society that loses its sense of meaning. Everything becomes about making more and more money. Everything becomes about doing better and better for you. Everything becomes about hedonism, like pleasure, just blatant pleasure, just going out, you know, doing whatever you want to do. Um, nothing matters. Health doesn't matter. Health is out the door. I mean, look at these ads and stuff like that, right? So you'll see a lot of these things like reverberate throughout society. Yeah, we're giving everything away. People don't even have a right to the Second Amendment. Never mind free speech. They want to take all this stuff away because this is a society that um, but these are ideologies that don't believe in in a god. I mean, they don't. They're not based in uh, the value of the individual, the, the, what an individual can do. It's, I think, based largely in part for victimization, and I think that that's really what um, social social justice is, or what social justice has become. Has been a lot of, okay, well, you know, who can we? Uh, who can we turn into a victim next to write a new narrative to give away more free stuff you know it doesn't it doesn't bode well man and you can tell too that these people are so um like they have their heads so far up there you know uh that they all they hear when they put their ear to the wall is their own echo like their own just validating their own ideas, validating their own beliefs. They have no idea that there are other opinions that could be valid. They, they, they've never heard them. They hear them and like, like some people hear what, what I've said, you know, about homosexuality and say, that's disgusting, that's gross. And you're entitled to that, that's totally fine. Like when you go out there and you try to share an idea with people, you should never expect that people are gonna jump on your bandwagon. Some people do, you know, a lot of people don't if it's like super controversial, I guess. Um, but, you know, if we don't have a free exchange of ideas, like, like what I'm trying to do now is an expression of the First Amendment that these people want to take away. You don't agree with us? And then, well, 
I, look, I don't want to get too much into it, right? Um, but yeah, so I know this topic, this, this talk was like little, <laughs> uh, a little different, but you know, um, but also a little samey. Um, I feel like I always go back to talking about, um, politics and, you know, specifically my issues with the left, but not only I think is it good to talk about it, um, but to really talk about some important issues and things that are kind of considered taboo. Now, I don't know that this will really get any traction. It'll definitely be, I think, artificially um, constrained by YouTube. We're not allowed to be recommended or not, like, like not shown. Like, it's not going to be an algorithm. They're going to flag it and say, okay, this we're definitely not going to recommend to anybody because it disagrees with our hate speech policies. If not terminated outright, maybe I get a channel strike. But, um, you know... I think we, we, we have to be able to talk about things. You know, we, we can't have a society where we don't talk about things that matter and we shouldn't be, you know, bullied into not talking about things that we think matter. But anyway, um, I'm just taking the time. Um, yeah, so if you guys like this, the, the really, really want to help the channel, share it because otherwise it's not going to get any reach. No one's going to see it. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, if you guys are on podcast services, same thing. I mean, if you want to help, if you agree with this message, if you think that it's worth someone hearing or listening to, then please feel free to do that. Maybe don't. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you don't like the message. That's fine, too. That's totally fine. Um, but, yeah, if you guys want to uh, contact me, you guys can leave me a message. Leave me a message on the YouTube, though, because um, there's a ton of podcast services out there, so I'm not going to see um, everything. So YouTube's kind of the central place right now. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys for watching and I'll see or listening if you're on a podcast service and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.